my quest for the ultimate geological hammer has led me to this model from Trowan Holden in the US. I found their website while I was repairing an old dry stone wall in my backyard. They're a specialist maker of stone masonry tools and it turns out they had some of the things that are exactly what I'm looking for. They've developed a range of tools with tungsten carbide tips to improve the durability of the working faces. I bought a model called the Stinger with a tracer on the front face and a pointing tip on the back. The tracer is for cutting larger blocks and the pointing tip is for shaping surfaces to fit. Since the Stinger was so effective at cutting rock, I decided to try it out as my geological hammer. It's very effective on large outcrops of particularly tough rock, but I found it was a little bit heavy and tended to smash smaller loose pieces. It would also spin sharply if I mishit the outcrop because most of the weight is close to the axis of the handle. The pointing end is also a bit too short to use as a pick for pulling boulders out of the earth. After some discussion with Tro and Holden, they suggested this model. It's basically a brick hammer with tungsten carbide faces on the hammer front and on the chisel at the back. The design keeps most of the weight down here away from the axis of the handle to reduce that spin effect and the chisel at the back can be used as a pick. I've been using this hammer almost continuously in the field now for about six months, so it's had a fair trial. It's a little bit scuffed as you might expect, but the durability of the faces is extremely impressive. It's broken an awful lot of rock. Sandstone, dolerite, amphibolite, quartz veins, and a host of other rocks that I didn't film. Even the best quality steel hammers would be significantly rounded after that amount of work, particularly along this top edge here. And require regrinding to maintain the square cutting edges. But the faces on this hammer have held their shape almost like new, particularly along that top edge of the front face. I was a bit worried that the tungsten face might chip on really hard rocks like quartz veins, but I've broken an awful lot of quartz veins in the last six months and it survived without a scratch. You certainly wouldn't want to use it like a chisel and hit that face with another hammer. But if you stick to breaking rocks, it'll outlast a steel face many times over. In some of my previous videos, I've stressed just how important it is to maintain square edges on the face of your hammer. If you swing the hammer a little away from vertical, it focuses the energy of the strike into a narrow line that helps to cut a clean piece off the outcrop with a minimum of effort. And that's pretty important if you break rocks all day for a living. It originally came with a wooden handle and it worked pretty well, although it did make a peculiar ringing sound on hard rocks. I prefer a longer handle, so I swapped it with this fiberglass one. It gives me a little more head speed and keeps my hands a little further from the impact. The grip on this fiberglass handle is pretty aggressive and that might be an issue for carrying it all day, but I don't find it a problem since I wear gloves all the time anyway, and it is particularly effective in wet environments. The only problem with this handle is that I noticed it's starting to shed some glass fibres from this area here where I damaged it by mishitting an outcrop. I fixed that issue temporarily with a coating of epoxy, but for this work environment you'd probably be better off to use a fiberglass handle with a plastic coating like the one on my Stinger. Alternatively, you could cover the shaft with a length of heat shrink tubing before you install the handle. If you use this dual wall type, it has an adhesive inside that'll keep it in place even if the shaft gets damaged. I'm mostly a hard rock geologist, so I'd normally select a point rather than a chisel for the back end. I find a point is a little bit better for getting under buried boulders and plucking them out to break. But this one gets the job done and it's perhaps a little bit more effective for splitting off slabs from outcrops and cleaving schists or bedded sediments. So it would probably be ideal if soft rock is your thing. I've been working with Tro and Holden to develop some prototypes specifically for the geology industry. So we might see a model with a point at the back in the future. But in the meantime, it looks like this one will get the job done very effectively for me with a minimum of maintenance. So if you'd like to try one of these out for yourself, 
I'll leave a link in the description below for the page on the Trowan Holden website for the head and another link for the long fiberglass handle if you'd prefer that option. Pricing is about equivalent to other high-end geological hammers, although the postage if you live outside the US can make them pretty expensive. But then again, if you're a field geologist and you use this thing all day every day, it's pretty important to have something that you're happy with. And as my father used to say, the pain of price is soon forgot. The pain of using poor quality tools lasts until you admit you've made a mistake and throw them away.